our next presentation um, by Diane Dealey Neal is titled Tree Mendis Careers in Forestry and Natural Resources. Um, I really love that pun. Um, she'll be talking about careers in forestry and natural resources, as well as the basics of hands on forestry data collection and analysis. Yeah, without further ado, I'll let you take it away, Diane, and um, speak about your work and your career. So um, I'm going to roll through these slides fairly quickly. So we have time for questions. Um, what they're they're there for your reference. So I know Emily's going to post um, all these slides, all these presentations. So it'll be something you can go back to. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about careers in forestry and natural resources. Uh, we'll talk about um, if you're interested in a career, how you get there, um, the different paths to getting out into the field so you can work outside every day. I'll talk a little bit about Forestry Challenge, which is what I do. It's an opportunity to, um, to try to practice, see if this is for you. It's to just see if it's a good fit to be working outside in, in the forest. And then hopefully um, there'll have be plenty of time for question and answer. So um, just to kind of review, forestry is science. So as much as you know, we look at this beautiful giant sequoia tree in the slide and we say, wow, it's gorgeous, I love it, makes you feel a certain way. Um, the study of forestry is actually science. So um, foresters have a degree, a bachelor of science degree. Um, with any science, it's based on data collection. So uh, we have to go out in the field. We have to, other than just walking around and looking at things, we have to actually quantify the forest in order to do forestry. Uh, math is used to interpret data. So once we collect all that information, we have to somehow um, put it together to make sense of it. And then um, that's, that's where empirical science stops. We have facts and we know them. But in forestry, what we try to do is take that information and make our decisions based on how we've interpreted that data set. So that's just kind of a basic, um, you know, basic foundation of forestry. So why should we manage forests? Why should we practice forestry? Why not just let them be? Well, um, I pulled up these slides. Um, these are slides of the past, um, the distant past, thank goodness, uh, from 100, about 100 years ago in the Santa Cruz area. And, you know, it's just our, again, our hearts, our emotions just, oh, this is awful. I mean, look what, look what we were doing to the environment. Um, so, you know, truly the good old days weren't the good old days for the environment. The environment suffered. We inflicted a lot of damage. So kind of moving forward, one option and kind of the, the knee jerk reaction to this disaster is to take a hands off approach to protest actions, to protest any involvement with our environment. But truly, a hands-off approach doesn't allow us the opportunity to make it better. So, you know, we're getting smarter as we get, as we, as time goes on. Uh, we can use that science, but if we don't, and if we take that hands-off approach, other things can happen that we don't intend because we care and we want to, we want to make our environment beautiful and protect it. Um, and you can see in the lower left slide, that's bark beetle damage, um, terrible insects infestations that can wipe out forests. And then, of course, on the lower right, you see what happens if, if our forests aren't healthy, we can have fires. Obviously, we've had many of those in the past several years. So truly, um, if we can just wrap our heads around the science and actually do positive things, we can have all the benefits of the forest. Uh, we can have the products, we can make the wood, the buildings, which is a new thing, this, these mass timber buildings. Uh, we can have our toilet paper. <laughs> uh, we, can, we can enjoy, we can recreate in the forest, we can have clean water and we can keep it safe and, and, and a good environment for wildlife. So rather than just the knee jerk of just locking it up and letting it be, we can actually get in there and, and make things better. And not just for us, but for, for, all, for all living organisms. So um, that's, that's why I think the forestry of science is so critical. And it's not just for the forest itself, it's for the other benefits like water and products and things that we use in the city. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about career areas. I kind of divided this into three categories, um, forestry, um, logging, and fire. So um, we're going to talk about those three kind of in, in those pieces. And that is on the right picture, uh, the logger. I just, I'm very proud. That's my son. Uh, he just graduated from Oregon State University in the spring, and he is a logger. He is a forest restorationist. All right, so moving to the next slide. Um, these are kind of some examples of things in the field of forestry, wildlife, recreation. Uh, these are all from a booklet that I have and that's available, and I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit, how to access this information.
but there are so many different things that people can do when they work out in the forest. Um, anything from, from forest engineers, managing recreation, growing trees, which is the field forester you see on the left side, um, dealing with the economics of forestry, um, because the things that we do in the forest can cost money, they can earn us money, we have to try to make all that balance. So those are just some examples of um, different fields within, within forestry. So to get more specific, I tried to provide some examples of jobs that are available. So for instance, CAL FIRE has a category, a classification called forestry technician. And so I put the link, I put that up there, uh, how, to, how to look at that. Um, the statewide file and filing date has already passed, but for those of you in high school or even starting college that are thinking about, wow, I'd love to have a great summer job, um, you kind of have to get on it early, but these jobs are available and CAL FIRE does hire many, many technicians uh, to do seasonal work in the summer. Another example, um, just as to show you that there are interns, um, SoCal Edison has a forest, they actually manage forests um, up near Fresno. And so they have, uh, every summer they hire technicians and they hire people who interpret the environment at their visitor center. And this is a great opportunity for people um, to do, have a summer job, do something, you know, maybe more fun than flipping burgers or other types of jobs that we've all done. Um, but they do house their people and um, it's a great opportunity. So um, I, have, I have access to that information. Um, we have a college and career newsletter that, that puts this stuff out. So um, just some examples of jobs that are available for foresters, even people who are still in their training. All right, next area. Uh, logging and reforestation, again, maybe something that people in Southern California feel a little disconnected from, but um, the way that we get our products to Home Depot and to the grocery store and the paper store is to have people out there actually, you know, removing some trees from the forest, sending them to a mill, and then uh, processing those into products. Along with that, with that, that harvest comes planting new trees. And of course, it's state law. We, we kind of got smart about that. We don't just cut trees down, we plant new ones. Um, there's a whole science and it's sort of like agriculture with trees of growing these seedlings and then planting them back and, and making them thrive in the forest. So uh, just an example, my son's company is always looking for people to hire. Um, that's one of the biggest issues with trying to restore our forests and operating equipment is there just aren't a lot of people out there that know how to do it. Um, I do have uh, some information about how you would train to do something like this. But um, certainly um, there's a huge shortage of people who know how to work in, out in the forest and on machines and, and do it properly. So um, anyway, just an example, again, hiring, lots of jobs out there. Uh, third area is the wild and fire area. And I kind of I threw in mechanics and milling, just um, it's sort of catch all. Um, so obviously firefighting is a big uh, career field. Um, and I'll, I'll explain, there's actually a program for wild and fire in college, um, I'll explain later. Um, but there's also all the infrastructure that keeps fire going, all the machines, um, you know, that, that have to do. And so you can see, for instance, CAL FIRE uh, has a job, had a job open for a heavy equipment mechanic. Uh, these are not jobs that require a full college degree, but certainly extensive and, and advanced training. So the pay is good. Um, just an example there. Another example. Um, oh, this is interesting. Um, Cal Fire has decided they'd like to put on a couple camps, one in San Luis Obispo this summer and one up in Redding for uh, young women who would like to learn about firefighting. So this is this application period is open now. Um, you can see the links, you can look it up there. But um, this is a free camp for women ages 14 to 18. And they kind of teach you the basics of firefighting. So if anybody out there is thinking, gee, this, this might be something that, that would be interesting to me, um, you should apply. You should definitely apply. It's the first year they're doing it and it's free. So um, another just example of a job description. I thought this one was really interesting. The Sacramento Tree Foundation has an, it actually has a lumber mill. So when they cut down trees in the city because they're, they're, they're weak or rotten, they're danger to, to the public, um, they don't want to just throw that away. So they actually have a, a mill that, that, that cuts these, these trees up and sells them uh, for products. So they, they had a job opening there for, for the person to, to manage that program. So that was another interesting job that was out there. Okay, so let's get into, um, this, this might be interesting, this might be a field you'd be thinking about doing. How do you get the training to be able to go out and do these jobs? So I'm gonna roll through this fairly quickly. 
um, two year, I mean, we're going to talk about two year college programs and four year programs. Um, starting in the north, Shasta College up and running a long ways from all of you down in San Diego, but they have the only program in the state that teaches people how to operate logging equipment. And they're getting grants, they're getting funding, and they're buying equipment. It's a great program, and it's about a year long program. They also have uh, two year degrees and certificates at Shasta College. You can see that, you can refer back to that later. Um, moving along, moving south, uh, Columbia College is basically uh, west of Sac or east of Sacramento up in the foothills. Uh, they offer certificates and uh, degrees. Um, you can either go take these courses and get out and start working or use them to transfer to a four-year school. So that's just another example of a two-year college with a program. Um, another one getting farther south near Fresno is Reedley College. And again, they, they offer the two-year program that can lead you to work or to a transfer to a different school. Um, one thing I remember hearing about Reedley College is that they had a 100% hiring rate out of their program. And that was a few years ago. I don't know if that still exists, but um, they about half of the coursework in this program is out in the field. So you're learning how to operate a chainsaw, how to survey for fish, how to do all these things that you see in the pictures. So um, anyway, it's, a, it's an awesome program. They also have on-campus housing at Reedley and at Shasta as well. So for people from far away, they've got a place to stay on campus. Okay, uh, another one closer to you. This is the closest two-year program I know of to San Diego, and that's Citrus College in Glendale. Uh, they have a two-year program for forestry, again, to self-sustained or self-contained or to transfer to a four-year school. So something to look at. Again, I've got links to all these, um, these, these college programs, um, and you can reach out to me. Okay, so one more, actually close, even closer to you, but it's not a forestry program, but I included it because it is close to you. Uh, they have College of the Desert in Palm Desert has a an AS degree in natural resources. So it's more of a desert, um, not a forestry centric degree, but they do have a program. So I thought you might want to be aware of that. It's fairly close to you. All right. Um, this is kind of in between two and four year. This is a brand new program. Cal State University San Marcos has a program for um, wild and fire. So a uh, brand new program. It's online. I think a lot of these people are um, seasonal firefighters that are trying to get in uh, full time and year round. So um, it's online, which is kind of cool. And they say it takes five semesters. So again, just something to make you aware of. It's fairly close to home down there in San Diego. Uh, next one, I'm going to start with the four year schools. Again, rolling right through. Uh, you might have heard of Humboldt State, about as far away as you guys can, as can get from you guys and still be in California. But um, the cool thing about Humboldt State, they have a lot of variety of, of degree options and they have a forest literally on campus. So um, when it's time to go out and do a lab, you literally walk out the classroom door and walk out into the forest. So that's that's a real plus for, for Humboldt State. Okay, um, of course, most of you know about Cal, University of California, Berkeley. They have a forestry program and um, they have a research forest, which is actually kind of near where I live, east of Sacramento. And so um, they have a lot of uh, college degrees and also graduate programs. Uh, this is where a lot of people who are going on for masters and PhDs end up. So um, they do have a strong program. All right, um, Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. They have a very good hands-on program um, and their, stud their research force, Cal uh, Swamp and Pacific Ranch is up near Santa Cruz. It's about a three hour drive from uh, Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. So um, they do have a variety of degrees. Um, they're more ag focused um, than I would say than ecology. Humboldt probably is more ecology focused, but um, they do have a wide variety of degrees, and I'm I really think this is a great program. So uh, let's see what else do we have here. Northern Arizona University, again out of state, um, but near you. Um, the picture on the lower part is Emily. She is starting there as a freshman. Uh, she loves the school. She uh, came through my program. Actually worked for me and chose NAU and she loves the program. So they do have a variety of degrees. You can see they've got bachelor's, master's and PhDs uh, and a forest fairly close to campus as I understand it. So um, something to consider. Some of these out of state schools do have um, some scholarship discounts for uh, California residents. So just something to think about just because it's out of state doesn't necessarily mean it's more expensive than staying in state. All right. so. Um, we have on our website uh, a, a page for careers. Um, it sort of is related to this booklet you saw pictures of from the inside. And I posted a lot of short videos that sort of explain some of the careers that you saw 
in the previous slide. So uh, if you visit forestrychallenge.org, uh, you scroll down, it's the middle tile right in the, in the homepage, it says college and careers. So this information is there and hopefully you'll, you'll take advantage of that if you're interested. All right, um, I'm gonna talk briefly about uh, what I do. And it's, um, so kind of to, to lead into our question and answer, uh, I run a program called Forestry Challenge. It's for high school students and it's an academic competition. Uh, it's basically a, an in-field crash course in forestry. And it is a, um, I would say an intro, college intro level. So very intense, uh, you learn a lot and it's fun because you're outside. So um, what it is, the participants spend four days learning about ecology and management. So we're actually taking that, that whole series of slides at the beginning, forestry is science, science relies on data. The students at these programs actually collect data and then analyze it and come up with solutions. So it's a fast track to that process that I explained at the beginning. Uh, every year is a different topic at each location. Uh, it can be silviculture, which is how to grow trees, vegetation, fuels, inventory. Uh, every year it's different. So even if students come back, they get something different every year. All right, so three goals to the program. What we'd like to do is, is for those of you who say, why do I have to learn this? We all have, we've all been there. Uh, why do I have to learn basic math and science and ecology? Well, it actually applies to the field. So it's kind of fun to go out there and go, okay, oh, I get it. Oh, wow, okay, that's what I was learning in school. Here it is out in the field. So we do all kinds of things. We measure tree diameters. We look at canopy in the forest. Uh, we can quantify forest density using that little piece of plastic, which is pretty amazing. So students get the, the tools in their hands and they collect the data. So that's goal number one. Goal number two, again, is the career piece. You're all at a point in your lives where you're, you're thinking about what you're gonna do after high school. And so you can meet people and talk to them about their careers and um, find out where they went to school and maybe get some ideas. Um, it's a good way to network and kind of kind of figure out what, what's out there. Goal number three is to have fun. The forest is a beautiful place and you know it's kind of nice that we can go out and spend some time there. So half of a day of our four day program is devoted to you guys going out and having a good time, going on a hike, doing some of our facilities, have ropes courses, um, you know, all kinds of fun things to do. So uh, we also do night hikes um, at some of our, at our events. So we just try to get people out having a good time outside. All right, so there are events coming up uh, in the fall. Um, and I put the star next to San Bernardino because that's the one closest to you, obviously. Um, this is open to any high school or group of high school students that's in a scout troop, a homeschool group, um, and we can be creative with that, a charter school, whatever it is. So we have four events, Shasta, El Dorado, Santa Cruz, and San Bernardino. They lead to a championship event, which is in April. Sadly, we've had to cancel the championship event from the events from last fall. Uh, these are the top teams, and we are in a position where we're going to have to cancel that. So hopefully by next fall, we'll be back on track. Everybody will be normalized, and these events can proceed as planned. All right, so just to give you a sense of scale, uh, last fall, we had over 400 students at the four fall events. Um, so it's a huge, it's a big program. Um, so anyway, it's, it's a lot of fun. You meet people from other schools, and everybody there has that common interest of wanting to, um, to study in the forest. So it's a good time. So I just wanted to get a sense of scale there. Um, how, to, how to sign up. So if you go on the website, I've put a screenshot of the homepage. Right at the top, it says pre-register for a fall event. All you do is click on that button. If you're a teacher, you fill out a little form. If you're a student, it redirects you. You let us know who you are. And we can work together to try to find um, a teacher at your school or an adult in your group, whatever that group may be, that would be interested in sponsoring or chaperoning the, you, this, your group at the event. So um, you do need to come with an adult. It's not just a bunch of people getting in the car and, and headed up to the mountains. Uh, we do ask for specific school groups or organized groups. So that's the, that's the beginning of the process right there. Okay, um, registration, just get a sense of how much it costs. Um, we don't ask for the money until you get there. We want to know who's coming, but we are, these prices are going to be discounted 50% because we got some great news. We just got a grant um, from the state for the climate investment grants. So all those numbers, you can cut them in half. The only thing we ask is that you pre-register pre or let us know that you're coming before June 30th. That gives you the discount. So you can see all those great forested environments. They're all different and they're all, they're all amazing. So um, that's my last slide. Um, just wanted to thank you for your time and attention and see if there's any questions about Forestry Challenge, Forestry, Colleges, Careers, 
uh, anything that I've covered today. Yeah, thank oh, you so much, so Diane, for your presentation. One question I have for you is, uh, what's your favorite, uh, what's the favorite thing about your job? Oh boy. Um, I think actually, even though, uh, two things. Uh, I love being outside. I thrive on it. I'm an avid skier, backpacker, and being out in the forest is just, it's just, a, it's just an amazing place to be. And it's my happy place. It's where I feel comfortable. So being able to spend time outside, that's definitely, that's definitely part of it. But, but for what I do and, and teaching other people, um, it's the relationships with the students, getting to know the students, asking them, what are you interested in doing after high school? You know, do you like being here? And then watching those students, when we give them their data set, everybody collects their own separate data in a part of the forest, and we put it together. And when they look at those numbers and go, oh my gosh, you know, they get these aha moments where they look at numbers and it actually means something. They can understand the number set. That that is one of my favorite moments. That when the students just go, "Oh my gosh!" You know, either, "Hey, this is great," or "Wow, this forest really isn't healthy." You know, when they kind of understand what the numbers mean, that's one of my biggest, my biggest um, enjoyments in my job. Awesome. Yeah. So I'll just ask uh, one more question, and then we'll wrap up. So the next question would just be, if you could give your high school self one piece of advice, what would it be? Hmm. Um. I, I was definitely, I was one of those students that wanted to do everything perfectly and I stressed out a lot. And I think, you know, just trying to look beyond the boundaries of school. Um, if you have opportunities to volunteer or meet people that are in a profession you're interested in or have an experience like Forestry Challenge where you guys should get to get out and try something, um, the more that you do, the more you're gonna find out what you might like. You also might find out what you don't like. And that's all very healthy. I mean, I, if students walk away from, from a forestry challenge event and say, mm, this, this, I have no interest in this, that's okay. At least they learn something. And if you can check things off the list, it's almost as valuable as checking them on the list. Conversely, you might, you might get out there and say, wow, this is exactly what I want to do. But unless you go out and try those things and get yourself outside campus, um, you're never going to know. So um, try as many things as you can while you're in high school. Um, and don't don't stress out too badly. I know if you're missing you're off campus for a day. It's always hard, but these things, these enrichment experiences, are definitely worth it. Sounds great. All Thank right. you so much, Diane. Uh, well, uh, that wraps up uh, this session for now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Just one other thing. Anybody, ForestryChallenge.org. If you you'll see this. Um, I didn't put it on the slides, but just go to the website. If you have questions, there's a contact page. You can contact me. Great, thank you.